and you're back. Hillary Clinton's the devil is something we always suspected. WikiLeaks just confirmed it. With the release of dozens of thousands of emails with WikiLeaks, it's kind of like drinking from a fire hose. For a lot of people, that's hard to navigate, especially because the media doesn't want you to even try. It's illegal to possess uh, these stolen documents. It's different for the media. So everything you learn about this, you're learning from us. Thanks for looking out, CNN. Remain calm. All is well. Some of the WikiLeaks are incredibly damning. They, they would be if we weren't desensitized to the corruption of our current political system. But there are some stories out there that aren't even real from WikiLeaks. They're made up. For example, Hillary Clinton's body was not snatched uh, nor replaced with number five from Short Circuit. <laughs> though it is plausible. Something to remember with all of the tabloid headlines out there, a uh, personal testimony is one of the least reliable forms of evidence in court. One of the most reliable? Documents, hard evidence, which is why WikiLeaks is so important. These are hacked emails, most of which you'll see today come from John Podesta, uh, chairman for the 2016 Hillary campaign, and a former chief of staff to Mr. President Bill Clinton, and counselor to one Mr. President Barack Obama. Uh, top 10 WikiLeaks you need to know. Let's get to it. Starting off with a bang. Number one, Hillary Clinton wants open borders. In a transcript taken from a speech, Hillary Clinton said, My dream is a hemispheric common market with open trade and open borders. So this is problematic, to use their term. Uh, only if you believe in countries. The term globalism is thrown around so flippantly today, it's lost all meaning. Uh, but the term globalism was invented for this. <laughs> Number two, admission that the Iran deal was absolutely horrible, as we said it was. Written from John Anzalone, this agreement condemns the next generation to cleaning up a nuclear war in the Persian Gulf. This is the greatest appeasement since Chamberlain gave Czechoslovakia to Hitler. To which one Mr. John Podesta replied, Yup. He didn't even fight it. The entire DNC in the public eye, no, 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 no. The Iran deal isn't what you think. Behind closed doors, it's exactly what you think. It sucks. Thanks, Satan. Number three for all you basement dwellers out there, the manipulation and or possible bribing of Bernie Sanders. Written to John Podesta, we are going to need his voters to turn out in November for Hillary Rodham Clinton. He won't be nominated. I am doing the opposite, repeatedly writing friendly and positive pieces about Bernie as a Hillary supporter. And when the time is right, I will have money in the bank with him and his people as a liberal to urge them to come out in force to vote for Hillary Rodham Clinton. We get it. Bernie Sanders got a raw deal from the DNC, but he was above it all. Except he's got three houses to pay for. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. Money, money, money. Number four, Democrats created fake sexist Trump ads. Are you smelling desperation yet? Some of the job requirements designed to look as an ad to work for Trump were as follows. No gaining weight on the job, must be open to public humiliation, a willingness to evaluate other women's hotness, proficient in lying about age if the boss thinks you're too old. Firstly, I don't have too many gripes with those, but we know that a lot of women would, and that's the point. Slander and impersonation coming directly from the horse's mouth. Don't call them horses, that's also sexist, but some of them look like horses. Believe me when I tell you, I've heard the news. Number five, which is particularly timely because right now, the current Democratic Party is being accused of committing voter fraud, which they deny. Uh, which is interesting because Hillary Clinton and her campaign vehemently accused Barack Obama of committing voter fraud in Colorado. I met with Jim and Mike in Denver. They are both old friends of the Clintons and have lots of experience. Mike hosted our Boulder Roadshow event. They are reliving the 08 caucuses where they believe the Obama forces flooded the caucuses with ineligible voters. They want to organize lawyers for caucus protection, election protection, and to raise hard cash symbol. One thing you'll find remarkably consistent is the typos and emojis in these emails. Yeah, at worst, it's slightly grating, but worth noting. Again, publicly, Democrats deny, deny, deny that they commit voter fraud behind closed doors when there's the infighting and they know that we're not watching. They know, of course, that voter fraud is being committed, but shh, don't tell CNN. They'll do the math for you. Welcome to hell. Number six, you know how we always talk? about how the left refuses to say Islamic terrorism, and it almost seems like they have their fingers crossed, hoping that every next mass shooter or terrorist is white, and they say, no, 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 no. Well, it turns out they do. As written in a private email from, again, Podesta, better if a guy named Saeed Farouk was reporting that a guy named Christopher Hayes was the shooter. Yes, clearly that would have been better for your campaign. Not so much 
America. And that's the overarching theme here. What's good for Hillary? Not so much good for America. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. They just kill all the geese. <laughs> Number seven and eight are kind of joined. We could probably have another 20, 30, 40, 5,000 of these examples of the Democratic Party and media collusion. But, uh, of course, we wouldn't have time for that list. So the two that stand out to me most are CNN's Donna Brazil gave the Clintons a heads up regarding a Bernie tweet storm. How do I know? Well, because Podesta wrote, thanks for the heads up on this, Donna. Call it a detective's intuition. And yet again, more proof that Bernie got a raw deal. Not a huge Bernie fan, but boy, did he get screwed on this. You belong with me. The next one is our own resident favorite, Ezra Klein of Vox.com. If you watch our show at all, you know that we have a good laugh about Vox's articles nearly every week, and we've rebutted a few of their videos, particularly on gun control. As a matter of fact, they are so known to be misleading and far left. Uh, there's a verb in Urban Dictionary, vox explaining is what they do. Of course, they deny, 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 but when asked with who they thought would keep other journalists accountable, namely only printing positive stories about Hillary Clinton, Jennifer Palmieri, Palmieri, I don't know, wrote this. I think that person, the degree to which they exist, is Ezra Klein, and we can do it with him today. So you've got Donna Brazil teaming up with the Clintons, teaming up with Ezra Klein, and of course CNN telling you, don't read these emails, we'll read them for you. Are you noticing a trend? If not, you, you might be a stupid person. Number nine, this is important. We know from WikiLeaks that Hillary Clinton knowingly criminally deleted emails. Deleted? Again, publicly deny, 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 but we see in a private email exchange with her staffers. Okay, one thing to use personal email, but why the twisted truth on why? With the two problematic areas being emails to Bill when they were to Bill's staff and B, only using one device. I can't really read that. The typos are awful. BlackBerry, when two weeks earlier it was an iPhone, BlackBerry an iPad. As Ann and I discussed, hopefully that's a timing issue and whilst in state, she only used one. Quick pause. You know this is authentic because they use the word problematic. Continue. I know when I talk to my friends who are attorneys, we are all struggling with what happened to the emails and aren't satisfied with answers to date. While we all know the occasional use of personal email addresses for business, None of my friends circle can understand how it was viewed as okay, secure, appropriate to use a private server for secure documents and why further Hillary took it upon herself to review them and delete documents without providing anyone outside her circle a chance to weigh in. It smacks of acting above the law. It smacks of the type of thing I've either gotten discovery sanctions for, fired people for, etc. I don't know that I can add much more, so let's go to number 10. That President Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton corresponded via private email. Why is this so important? She knowingly deleted emails, as you see in those exchanges. Why was she let go when it is illegal to do that? A lot of people suspected that this may go to the top. It may reflect poorly on President Barack Obama. Otherwise, why would he protect her from the fall? There's a lot of back and forth. Here's a highlight. National Review talked about it in an email from Podesta to Mills. He said, think we should hold emails to and from the president. That's the heart of his executive privilege. We could get them to ask for that. They may not care, but it seems like they will. In other words, they put these emails under a special category where only Barack Obama would have the executive privilege to ask for them or release them. You think Barack Obama was going to do that? No, of course not. It reflected poorly on him and Hillary and she could drag the ship down with her. People. The emails verifiably prove beyond any shadow of a doubt that Hillary Clinton is lying, Barack Obama himself has been lying, and the media has been lying all along with them. And they've been laughing about it through private emails the whole way. Now, I know we could look silly because at the time of this video, they're still releasing more and it could get a whole lot worse. I suspect that it will. Hopefully they bring this up in this week's debate. We'll be live streaming it. You don't need a conspiracy. You don't need to lie. You don't need to blow up something any bigger than it is. Just go read the WikiLeaks emails and understand that it's already really bad. If nothing else, a silver lining in this election is I think a lot of people, left or right, their eyes have been opened to just how easily they've been manipulated and how proactive the media has been in doing that. You don't need to trust them anymore. They don't need to be the gatekeepers anymore because you know they've been lying to you. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. End card time. You're still here. That means you have some decisions to make. Go to louderwithcrowder.com for references. Click my face to subscribe. Watch one of these videos next to me or 
you can click the mystery box. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Mystery box land can get weird. And by weird, I mean the kind of weird you don't come back from, or sometimes it can be wonderful. But a lot of the times it's weird.